Hey everybody, what's going on? Today this is Karen and it has been many moons since I've made one of these videos. I've had another channel and um, I've been paying attention to that one and I'm sorry <laughs> that I negated this one. But I'm back now and hopefully it's going to get cooler in the month of October. So far it's still, you know, um, really hot in September, 80s, 90s. So um, I was even... I haven't done this in so long. I was even like prepping because <laughs> I was so nervous, which is so silly, I know. But it's been a long time since I've done one of these heart to heart um, videos. Yeah. So I hope that you are doing well. I've had um, a couple of bouts of sickness. I'm not going to say what's going on, but that has also kept me from being healthy and well enough to make some videos. And also for the fall weather I'm going to hopefully start making some more little delectable things so that way you guys can get some more of my um, recipes. So today is about the Lord's love. The Lord's love not just for me but for you, for, for everybody. Um, God loves everybody. God loves straight people. God loves gay people. God loves transgenders. God loves just everybody. And I think that a lot of gay people have gotten the wrong side of um, the Christian. Um, now Christians believe that Jesus came to die on the cross for them. And that's it. And um, that that's it. That's the category in itself. Um, there are denominations. Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Methodist, um, Presbyterian. Um, and, and so on. But I am here to kind of set the record straight as to how the Lord loves you and how it came about for him to love you. Because I, being a Christian, I'm not saying that I don't sin, not saying that I don't swear, not saying that I don't, you know, just do things wrong as well but I'm a Christian of love I'm not a Christian of hate um, for example I was walking with a couple of friends yesterday and we're walking um, by Dairy Queen and we're and then we're come back down through quick check and there's these young guys out the window you know said suck my fell in the blank and get off the road you fat girls or you fat whatever and my friends decided to get upset over that and I didn't hear the first part so I said okay the second one is kind of a statement I am fat <laughs> I am in the road <laughs> um, and sometimes yes I can be a B-I-T-C-H <laughs> so that was more of a statement and they got very upset over it but what I was trying to tell them is if you know who you are why would you let it upset you so um, that was just a little example of, of that of um, so when I choose so so I responded hey there first and then then they kept on talking and I said and I screamed to them God bless you and you know the other person that was with you know he's like come come back and tell that to our faces you know and and all that drama and I'm just like you know I really don't need that I don't need to get back at them for what they said to me because I don't take in what they say to me you know somebody can say something to you and you can decide to leave it right there you don't have to take it into you you can just leave it where it is and say okay have a nice day bye so um, that's the kind of Christian I am. I'm not a hating Christian. I don't have to get back at them. I mean, there was a time in my life when I was younger and more immature, and not so much in the Lord that everything somebody said that I had to, I had to be as wicked as they were, you know. So I've found myself in the Lord, and have matured myself in the Lord through much testing. Thank you, Lord. And um, I just find that. The people that say evil things about gay people 
are really not Christians. They might be of a denomination. I'm not saying all, all denominations do that. They might say that they're from this group or that group or that group. But God sent the message of love, not hate. Um, it's been a while since I read my Bible, so forgive me on my kind of um, bubber here, but um, God sent his son to be an example of love. You never heard of um, a story in the Bible that said Jesus hate, hated those people so that way he sent them into wherever. You know, Jesus came to love, share his love, share the love of God to show um, the people who the Lord is by his example. And his example was not hate. Jesus' example was not hate. It was love. So I want everybody, not just gay people, but everybody to know, no matter who you are, no matter what you do or did, God loves you. God loves you. Sometimes we trick ourselves into feeling defeated so that way... We trick ourselves into feeling defeated so that way we might not have to deal with the issues. Because once you come into realization about your issues, then you have to deal with your issues. So, thank you, Lord. I was struggling through that one. It's been a while since I've done a video. And um, I just, I'm tired of people hating on gays. Um, I'm tired of people hating on everybody else. Because the problem is, when somebody says, God hates you. They're not saying, God hates you. They're saying, I hate you. But I'm putting it under God so that I kind of get off scot-free here. That's what they're really saying is, I'm playing it like I'm Christian. And I'm telling that God hates gays. I'm sorry, I got um cable company. Okay, I'm sorry that I was... Um, I got cut off in such a, um, in, in such a, um, serious place. Um, but when people say, God hates you, they're really saying that I'm going to level it under God. That way I can kind of stand behind that name. And because I'm saying it's God, that, that way you're not seeing that it's actually me that's telling you I hate you. You're saying... You're seeing me saying God hates you when really it's me saying I hate you or I don't like you or I don't like what you do. So, um, yeah, people feel like that they can just say things like, you know, God does this. But what they don't realize is that their one day is going to be that judgment seat. And everything that they've said in the name of God that was not really in the name of God, they will have to um, answer to God for that. Okay, back again. I had to cut and crap a little bit. Um, so, yes. And also, um, God loves the person. He doesn't love the sin, but he loves the person. Um, it doesn't matter what sexual orientation you are, what skin color you are, what whoever you are, what age you are, what race you are. It doesn't matter. God loves the person. He doesn't love the sin in the person. But he loves the person. Say you like the sin of masturbation. Doesn't matter if you are gay, straight, male, female. He just doesn't like that sin. Um, it's all about the sinning because once you start down that road, it's harder to turn back to God after you start the sinning. Um, like say if you're really trying to abstain from from sex and masturbation and you I mean say you're a Christian and you're just really you're just really trying hard to abstain from it and I can tell you that it's really difficult and um, but I have abstained from that for the most part um, and but say you're trying to abstain from it and then you just can't and then you just go off and you start doing it more and more and the more you do it 
the more harder or more difficult it is to come back and submit yourself to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. And it brings you down a path that at first you're, um, you're you and God. But after sinning for a long time, it brings you down a path that is just leading you more and more to the enemy, leading you more and more down into that ditch. So God doesn't like the sin, period. doesn't matter who you are. He just does not like that sin. But God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish and shall have everlasting life. And, wow, that was a good one. <laughs> and um, it's just, I, I want to preach love. 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 God loves you so much, you know. Other people and ourselves would like to talk us into, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm this, I'm that. And also, you have to pray. Um, there's a song called, um, what is it? Break Every Chain by, I think her name is Tanisha Cobbs. Um, to break those strongholds. I mean, people have, have told you things. Ever since you were a child, sorry, that's my text. Ever since you were a child, you're you're dumb, you're stupid, you're not worth anything, you're ugly, you're this, you're fat, you're, and all those things. You keep on hearing them and hearing them and hearing them, and then you start saying them to yourself. I'm dumb. I'm fat. I'm crazy. I'm stupid. And then once you get that into your mind, they're just old recordings, is what they are, as a friend in church said. Um, and what you have to do is you just have to. Um, pretty much just, I go to YouTube. YouTube has wonderful Christian songs. Just everything on there I could ever think of just has it. Um, and there's a song from Tanisha Cobb's Break Every Chain. And you just got to sing to God and pray to God that he breaks those old chains, those old recordings. Because then you can start hearing new recordings from God saying, you're beautiful, you're my child, I made you, I created you, you will fit in the palm of my hand, I adore you, you are blessed. Sorry. I'm not looking at my text, I'm just turning it off. You are blessed, I, you know, you're adored, you're loved, you're... So you have to get those old recordings of I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm crazy, I'm stupid, I'm I'm no good, out of your out of your mind, and that way God's recordings, new recordings, can come in, because you're beautiful and you're blessed and and you're loved and I created you. You know God stamped His um, approval on your foot, right on the bottom of your foot. You might not be able to see it, but He did, and He takes you out of that clay, out of that mire out of that muck and put you up on a rock where he can where you can just be you where, where you can just be steady you know I know I've kind of gotten off into the wrong um, wrong way here but I think it's about those recordings about ourselves that other people have said to us and how we view ourselves you know the eyes of the flesh are the worst thing about us our eyes, because we go and we look and we judge. We judge ourselves in the mirror, which is I what I do. We judge ourselves in the mirror. We look in the mirror and say, oh, I hate that, and I hate that, and I hate that, and da-da-da-da-da. You know, all the way up and down the body. And then we look at other people and say, oh, you know, I, I can't believe what she, I can't believe what that girl's wearing today. You know, her mama didn't teach her, and I say this a lot, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Her mama didn't teach her how to dress. You know, instead of saying that, just say, Lord, please. Um, have a positive role model in that lady's in that young girl's life and I, I do it myself I gossip sometimes and I know I sin I know I'm a sinner but I'm trying to get those old recordings and sometimes you might have to walk away from the people that have always been in your life in order to get away from those old recordings because those people put that on you you know what I mean so you sometimes you have to walk away from the people that put those recordings on you even if they're your family. Well, that sounds crazy to some people that your family is all you got and everything. But um, but yeah, just, just um, so try to, if you're a very negative person, there's some very negative people in the world, just try to say one thing positive about yourself and one thing positive about somebody else. Um, 
people, human people, we have lost contact. And that's why I love that Liberators. I forgot what's called, but something, something Liberators. And you put contact back in because we're all always on this tablet or this nook or this phone or this iPod or this iPad. And we've lost the human contact. People love to hear, oh, you have beautiful, I love those earrings on you. You know, oh, that makeup just, just makes your complexion look so just beautiful. And, and, and it just, we need to get back to feeding each other in a good way. You know, not just saying, not just downing you. Um, just, just keep it, you know, up the good, the good, um, the, the positive, the positive. There's so much negativity and the um, enemy would love for you to keep that negative onset, you know, and that's where depression comes into because you think, oh, poor me. Oh, poor me. Oh, this is this and oh, this is that. And but once you come to God, God, and you really pray and you really seek God with your heart, you really seek him. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. I don't care what age, what race, what um, nationality, um, what gender. It doesn't matter. Once you come to God, God can help clear all of that old, ugly, dirty recordings away of, of um, self-worth and everything like that. So I know that, that people that have been so rejected by Christians or so-called Christians, um, the first thing, the last thing they want to do is go to God, but that is not God. The people that have hurt you with their words saying that it was God and it was hatred and not God's love, that, that's, that, that's not God, honey. That's not God. And I would hate for you to miss a chance of knowing who God is and knowing who you are in God. Just because of somebody's so-called Christianity or negativisms. So, um, yeah, I think God just really led this, this speech today, this talk. I'm just tired of people, of gay people, being put down by others. It just really affects my heart. It really does. And, um, you know, it used to be black people. You know, we used to be racist against black people. Now we're bigots against gay people. And there's always going to be something. Do you know why? There's always, thank you, God, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You know why there's always going to be something that people don't like? It's because they're not themselves or not they have hate within themselves and if you have hate within yourselves and you don't love yourself then you can't love anybody else that's why god you're so good that was god that was god right there thank you jesus thank you jesus you're exactly right lord there's always going to be something else um you know hate on women hate on men hate on black people hate on gays hate on on whoever because People need to hate somebody because they have to, they feel that they hate themselves. So in order to not hate themselves so much, they have to put the, the point not on themselves, but on somebody else. And that's why, but they don't even have to hate themselves. They don't, they hate themselves because the same strongholds, they're called strongholds, were put on them. Like I said, those recordings are strongholds, you know, um, um, the recordings of you're not good you're not worth anything you're useless all those old recordings get into somebody and they get they get hate the hatred starts kind of coming up like a volcano and instead of it, it can't stay here so they have to put it on somebody else and that's why people say you know to gay people or whoever that they hate you or that they despise or or whatever you know, that's why. It's because when somebody says something derogatory towards you, and I know this is so hard when it hurts so bad, you got to pray for them. And I know that is not always the top thing that I want to do. Sometimes I just want to yell at them. I want to scream. I want to say the nastiest, hurt, most hurtful thing sometimes to somebody who says something so nasty and hurtful to me. But that might please me. 
but it's not pleasing God and it's not helping them and only it doesn't even help me so the good thing to do is just say okay God I'm really hurt I'm really pissed off and I just want to swear at them more but please Father God just, just even if you can't muster anything just say your will God your will be done in my life and their life and that's it so I think this has been a really nice video and I'm just so thankful that God has moved through me today to tell you this this message. I'm very thankful that, that God has, that I can be able to let God move through me and, and touch others. That, that really, it really just touches my soul, touches my heart. So, you know me, I'm a, I'm a blubber person. I just cry all the time. So, especially things that are heartwarming, you know, just to, to allow God to move through you and to give his message to other people through you. Wow. Yeah. So, God bless y'all and just try to, you know, love yourselves loving yourself is the hardest thing anybody any person can do and it's a daily struggle but just just you know you might how i started was i just started putting post post-its everywhere you're loved you're worthy you're beautiful you're cherished just just little post-its you know and if you can't do a lot just put maybe one on your computer or one on your TV, or one where you, one on your refrigerator, wherever you look the most. One in the mirror, you know, just, um, yeah. So, God loves you, whoever you are, whatever gender you are, whatever race you are, whatever age you are, whatever skin color you are, God loves you, and don't you forget it, okay? All right. Love you too. Bye. Okay, that was a very nice ending to my message, but of course I have one more thing to say. I'll try to keep it quick. Um, I know a female in my life that um, as soon as she doesn't get a positive reaction, she gets angry really quick. Like say she's in a supermarket and a lady's walking down the other side of the aisle and she says, hi, how are you? or whatever, and if she doesn't get a smile back or something nice back, she gets mad real quick. And, um, but this is what I've been trying to tell my niece pretty much all summer is, um, be yourself, be who you are, but if you don't get that back, it's not a negative reaction to you. It's who they are and what they're doing in their lives and how they react to things in their lives. Um, I don't know if you got that or not, but um, you know, say she's checking out and she's, you know, again saying, hi, how are you? And and how's your day? And, and she's trying to be nice and friendly and talkative and, and, um, and everything. And if she doesn't get that smile back or that a little bit of a positive um, reinforcement, she gets mad and comes out of whatever store she's in and starts just mother you know and she gets more negativity in herself and a lot of people do that and I used to do that and sometimes I still do if I'm, if I'm not um, focused on God that day if I'm not focused on the Lord you know God and I'm like that that girl is such a bee you know um, I can't believe she was acting towards me in that way but you have to remember that it is not a Help me, Lord, with the words. It is not a reaction. It is not a a bad thing on you. If they don't answer you in the way that you want them to, it's on them. Like I said, if somebody says something to you, you can choose to take that in and mull it over and 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 just really just fester yourself about what somebody just said to you. Or you can just say, okay that's on them and i'm leaving that alone god i give it to you i know a lot of people who just 
and they get so mad if, if somebody doesn't look at them right or somebody doesn't smile at them right or somebody doesn't doesn't please what they want to be pleased about they get so angry and what you're doing is you're not helping other people and you're not even helping yourself you're hurting yourself more by expecting that reaction and when you don't ex when you expect because it's your expectancy and when you don't get that expectancy back then you get mad but you can't expect somebody to do what you want them to do because they're going to do what they're going to do get what i mean so i know i'm kind of harsh or abrupt but um that is just another thing that you have to work on if you are expecting somebody to give you a smile if you're expecting for somebody to give you the answer that you would answer if you're expecting somebody to just say hi how are you how's your day to put time into you and if you don't get that you can't be mad because it's, that's your expectancy not their expectancy you see what I mean so try um, next time you're in the supermarket and and um, you know still still be your pleasant self you know I'm going to just again, be a couple more minutes. Two years ago, maybe three years ago, I went and I had a day. And I, you know, I get to my bills and everything once a month. And and so the Lord said to me, we had this conversation before I even went out. You know, you got to set yourself up before you even go outside. You know, just, that's going to be another video. And he said, no matter what anybody says to you today, no matter how they act, you be yourself you say please you say thank you you say you're welcome you say all those things you open doors for people and if they don't say thank you just go on with your day so i was thinking okay you know in the, in the beginning of the day i'm like okay maybe i'll change a couple lives today and <laughs> it wasn't it at all i went out and i did all those things and, you know, I went to McDonald's for breakfast, and I went to the dollar store, and I went to ShopRite, and I did all these things. And by the end of the day, I'm going home on cloud nine. Because it didn't alter their attitudes, it altered my attitude. So that's another thing that you have to think of. Okay? So you be you, and if they, you don't get the same expectancy back, leave it right there. There's that wall, leave it right there. I don't want you to have your walls up, but there's, you know, just... Okay, got to give it to you. All right, so that's five more minutes. <laughs> We're almost at 30 minutes, and uh, that's a long time to talk. So God bless you, and have a good day. Bye.